Let's call this meeting to order. Treasurer, take roll. Sure. Colonel Evans? Here. Mr. Grozan? Here. Mrs. Ludwig? Here. Mr. Miko? Here. Mr. Naso? Here. Stand for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. After that, we have oath of office for uh, Duke Evans and George Grozan. Uh, George, Mr. Grozan, and Colonel Evans, you want to meet me at the podium? Well, congratulations on the re-election. Uh, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge your duties as a member of the Board of Education of the Strongsville City School District, Cuyahoga County, Ohio, to the best of your ability, and in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter to be enacted during your continuous and set office and until your successor is elected or qualified? If so, please say I do. I, I do. do. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, this next, uh, next on the agenda is the election of the board president for a one-year term. Um, do we have any nominations for president? I'd like to nominate you, Mr. Naso, for president for another year term. Thank you. Do I have a second? So moved. Thank you. Do we have any other nominations for president? I'd like to nominate Richard Micko. Do I have a second? Seeing as we don't have a second. You can second it. I second. Okay. All right. So now, um, um, Treasurer, will you take a uh, roll in order as they came in? Sure. So the first uh, participant is uh, Mr. Nate, or the first nomination is Mr. Naso. And um, I'm going to order Colonel Evans? Yes. Mr. Grozan? Yes. Mrs. Ludwig? No. Mr. Micko? No. Mr. Naso? Yes. And as that is, as you still have to write it out. what's that? I think you still have to do it as everybody else can. Okay. Just for so, that. So the majority voted for Mr. Naso, and um, just so we're on the record, do we want to take a vote for uh, Mr. Micko? Sure. I'll just go over Mrs. Ludwig? Yes. Mr. Miko? Yes. Colonel Evans? No. Mr. Grozan? No. And Mr. Naso? No. Motion does not pass. Uh, Mr. Naso is appointed president. Congratulations. <laughs> and Mr. Naso, uh, could you meet me at the podium for the oath of office? Absolutely. Do you solemnly affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge your duties as President of the Strongsville Board of Education to the best of your ability and in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter to be enacted during your continuance in said office and until your successor is chosen and qualified? If so, please say I do. I do. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here, 
Charge. Okay, the next thing on the agenda will be the election of a vice president for a one-year term. Do I have a nomination? I'd like to nominate uh, Duke Evans for vice president. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, George. Do I have a second nomination? I nominate Richard Micko. Do I have a second? Second. We do. So we have two. Um, We'll go through the same procedure. Uh, George, Treasurer, could you uh, take role in the order in which they came in? Sure. Uh, the first candidate is uh, Colonel Duke Evans and uh, Mr. Naso? Uh, yes. Mr. Grozan? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Ludwig? No. Mr. Miko? No. Um, and Colonel Evans? Yes. majority passed for Colonel Evans and then just um, move on to the second candidate for the vote um, which is Mr. Miko uh, Mrs. Ludwig yes Mr. Miko yes Mr. Naso no Colonel Evans no Mr. Grozan no so with that Colonel Evans has been elected vice president solemnly affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge your duties as Vice President of Strongsville Board of Education to the best of your ability and in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter to, enact, to be enacted during your continu continuance in said office and until your successor is chosen and qualified. If so, please say I do. I do. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, uh, public comment, I don't believe we have any. Um, that, on the next part of the agenda is the appointment of a liaisons and uh, committees for one year. Um, for city council, uh, we'll have Jane, and the alternate will be Duke. For the Education Foundation will be Duke and myself. For PTA, council will be Jane, and the alternate will be George. Ohio School Board Association legislation will be Richard Micko, and uh, student achievement will be Jane Ludwig. We don't actually have to vote on this, but since it's on the agenda, we can. Um, can I have a motion? So moved. Um, second. 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 Thank you. Any discussion? Anybody want to switch? Um, well, I just wanted to know if, since George, you attend more of the PTA meetings than I'm able to, did you want to be the primary and then me be the alternate, or are you fine with what it is now? Uh, I'm fine with the way it is now, but what okay. I'd like to do is sit down with you. I was just going to make mention okay. of it of, with the schedule to see if there are meetings that you can make and not make. And that we, I think we make I it and so that they're both? No. Well, it, it's I fine. Mean, the, it's fine the way it is. Okay. It's just, right. and we'll handle it. Okay. Jane, you, oh, yeah. and, you and I can manage it. Yeah. It's yeah, just. I, guess, just didn't, okay. I think I did a poor job of communicating last year what ones I can could not make. So if you and I could sit down with the schedule, that'd be great. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Now we've got the, re the reaffirmation of the second year term of Richard Meko appointment to Polaris. Oh, we have to vote. Okay. Oh, we got to vote twice. That's crazy. Okay, let's vote. Colonel Evans. 
Yes. Mr. Grozan? Yes. Mrs. Ludwig? Yes. Mr. Miko? Yes. Mr. Naso? Yes. Motion passes. Reaffirmation of the second year of the third year term of uh, Richard Miko appointment to Polaris. And I believe this year you're going to be president of Polaris, correct? I won't know until Monday. Monday? Okay. Our meeting is Monday. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Um, board appointments uh, for one year terms. Uh, we have the finance committee will be Duke and myself. We've made some significant changes to the finance committee this year. So we're looking forward to getting that rolling. Uh, the pi uh, policy committee will be Jane and Richard. Facilities com committee will be George and I'll be the alternate. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Have a second? Second. Thank you, George. Any discussion? Uh, do we want to consider business advisory council now? Um, I don't think it's going to get started. Why don't we just add it to the next agenda, unless you have a Well, we, the option that we have is, uh, George and I were actually looking at this uh, earlier today. Um, with the business advisory committee, we cannot, we can only approve board committees at this meeting. So the option, would, it's correct, but by June we have to have the committee up and running. Um, so option A is to put the business advisory committee on this and um, appoint two interested board members to that. That would meet quarterly. If not, we could have it as a superintendent's committee once it gets rolling for the rest of the 18 year and 19, okay. it would be put on as a board committee. Uh, but we can't approve it at any other meeting but this as an official board committee. Okay, well then let, I would suggest that we will do it as a superintendent's committee this year because I want to talk to the, I don't, I know Richard's very interested. I know I am, I don't know who else is. So I just want to make sure that we, you know, we get the, the right two people on it. So I'd like to wait. Okay. Um, roll. Roll. Roll tide. Colonel Evans? Yes. Mr. Grozan? Yes. Mrs. Ludwig? Yes. Mr. Miko? Yes. Mr. Naso? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Next on the agenda, the establishment of the 2018 Board of Education meeting dates uh, that are in Exhibit A. Um, we will be using Robert's rules of order. Uh, will be used for the uh, for this board, absent of board policy. Um, there's an establishment of a service fund for the for the year of 2019. Recommendation by the superintendent authorizing the treasurer. Uh, to reinvest funds as necessary to pay bills uh, when it's adopted by the in the appropriations um, and the next item is 16 um, this will be it resolved that the superintendent of the schools and his de designees be authorized to con contract legal counsel as necessary for the successful performance of their duties legal counsel is designated to be Bricker Eckel Smith Peters a whole bunch of names um, do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Um, any discussion on any of the firms? Riley, Walter, Haverfield. They all have none of these firms that are on the list. Uh, we don't pay retainers. We use them as necessary. They're all um, they're all specialists in their areas. So we use certain ones for uh, for you know regular general liability type stuff. We use other ones for negotiations. We use other attorneys as needed for different specialties, mm -hmm. but none are paid a retainer. Um, George, you want to take a roll? Colonel Evans? Yes. Mr. Grozan? Yes. Mrs. Ludwig? Yes. Mr. Miko? Yes. Mr. Naso? Yes. Item 17, Board of Education meetings and minutes. Um, all the minutes will be available. You know, the Board of Education receives the minutes of the previous meetings at least three days or more in advance of the meetings authorization is given to the board to waive readings of minutes at the meeting uh, resolution uh, requesting notification be resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent to improve the rev resolution requesting that the board of education be notified by the tax commission of any application of exemption for taxation for any property located within the district this resolution is pursuant to ohio revised code 5715.27 Tax budget for the fiscal year 2019 be resolved upon the recommendation of the treasurer of the tax budget for the fiscal year be adopted for 2019. Exhibit B. Mr. Naso, I yes. Do, if you're interested, I do have a few slides on the tax budget. If no, bring it you up. Want me to go over. <clears throat> this 
So the, the tax budget's an annual um, budget that we must pass by at the organizational meeting and submit it to the county by January 15th. And what it does is it's, it sets the ball rolling for the annual budget for the upcoming school year. And then it also um, shows a need to the county on, on why we need to collect taxes that, that were levied. Um, it's, it's statute that they require from the tax budget. Um, they use that to set the tax rates, which they'll send us back to certify. And then um, we send them back, they'll send the tax budget back, they'll send us the tax rates certified. We approve them through a tax rate resolution earlier in the spring. Um, the tax budget can be found in Exhibit B as five schedules. Uh, the first schedule is the taxes that are levied. Um, the second one is a statement of activity for the upcoming fiscal year, so the, the estimated resource appropriations. Uh, three is unvoted general obligation debt. Four is voted debt. And five is any tax anticipation notes, which we have none. Um, schedule one um, is, is the, 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 main, the main schedule. It is a listing of all of our uh, taxes that are levied. Um, as you can see, the authorized millage at the rate was passed. Uh, and the general fund was 77.78 mills overall with a permanent with a permit improvement, PI is another mill, then the bond retirement is three mills, so overall 81.78. Uh, it's broken down by effective rate, meaning that although they were passed at this minimum rate, uh, what the county does is, uh, by law through House Bill 920, is to keep the collections as if they were originally passed. The only changes are if there's any new construction to those levies. So for a residential, um, effective rate is 41.2 mills and the effective commercial rate is 45.36. Overall, all funds uh, we are looking to collect, if, if collected at 100%, um, $64 million in tax revenue in all funds. 58.7 of that is in the general fund. And right now, our current collection rate overall is about 97%. So estimating we'll probably collect about 97% of these funds next fiscal year. And what that means in comparison to this year, uh, in doing this, our assessed valuation is updated at the begin of, beginning of each calendar year. Um, so our assessed valuation has increased um, by, by, ov by um, overall by 30 million from 1.4, 1,466,000,000 to 1,496,000,000. Uh, Within that 29 million, they did include the middle school, which is going to become exempt. So in backing that property out, overall the increase is about 14.7 million. And how that impacts us uh, financially is we should receive about another $200,000 in tax revenue this year, and then on an annual basis about 400,000. So that's, that's the schedule if there's any questions. And then uh, schedule <coughs> two, which can be found in exhibit is the statement of activity. Uh, I do have a question for yes. you. So I read, you know, in the post a while back, they listed some organizations, uh, some new um, businesses that came into the community, and they're all, every one of them received a TIF. Okay. So it's my understanding that the school district will be kept whole on the taxes that should be paid. Is that correct? Correct. And that is the increased value of the property. So for, what, for us, what that means is we are going to be um, kept whole on the increased value of that property. It doesn't come in, it still comes from the taxes and those businesses won't see it any different on their tax bill, but the way the county collects it and sends it back to us, it's not included in uh, property taxes, it's included in other revenue under a TIF line. Um, once that TIF expires, most of the ones that the city is doing is for 30 years. Uh, once, once that is done, it, the money gets reduced from the TIF balance and it goes into the the tax, the tax portion. And I know at other times we've been surprised by the TIF funds and the timing of the receipt of the TIF funds. I remember one time when we received about a $2 million block of them and we were thrilled to death, but we didn't know they were coming in and it's embarrassing when you can't, you know, when, when that stuff happens. So do you, do you now, and that was a previous treasurer, right? So that wasn't you who's su far superior. Um, do, you, do you have a schedule of when those funds will be received and what they will be? Yeah, I, I have a schedule and a breakdown of what those are, and um, I try and keep track of them. For the most part, they're op they're um, they've been consistent. They're slightly going up as more tips are coming in annually. We meet at the county with with the city, 
um, with their finance team, the mayor, and myself and Cameron as well, we go down to review the TIFs okay. at the county level with the county. Uh, what happened in that year, it was actually the first year I was here. It was, uh, the previously the TIFs were consistent and then a delinquency came in okay. and it, um, no, the, the previous year I came in, it was, uh, that's when it came in. So my understanding was to keep them consistent and then found out that it was uh, delinquency that came in. Um, Afterwards, so that that one kind of surprised me. But now we have a better handle okay. on a Excellent. schedule. We have um, between myself and the city, um, we have a schedule of where, when those are, when they're coming, and when they run out. Okay, thank you, yep. Mr. Nance. It's also good to note that I think that the public needs to understand that we have to fight for our values every year. Um, large commercial properties and whatnot, they try to fight for lower taxes on a yearly basis. And we have to, as a school district, spend taxpayers' money to fight for that revenue and keep that money coming into the school districts. Um, so that's one of those attorneys that we had mentioned previously, is we have to go fight for the dollars and cents that we need to educate our children within the community. Right. So. Thank you. And then to that point, we fight for those, and then we also look at sales, too, and try to go the other way to recoup. Um, some of some of what we lost there we also look at sales and we try to um also see where we should have received more okay so it um we try and combat it that way um schedule three is our unvoted debt it's just our then the general fund uh, the 2006 although it's listed uh, that should come off um Next month, we should make the pay to pay that off early as it was approved previously. But at the time of this filing, it, that transaction has not occurred yet, so I still need to show it. And then Schedule 4 is the 81, is the remaining balance on the $81 million debt issue of, uh, as of January 1st, uh, $72,265,000. $72, two, so that concludes the tax budget. If there's any questions. Nope. Thank you. Thanks. Item 20, uh, be it resolved upon the recommendation of the treasurer that the board authorizes <coughs> the treasurer to invest up to a maximum of 40% of the public of the district's interim funds in commercial paper notes in accordance with board policy 614, 6144 investments. Item 21, broadcast of board minute meetings in accordance with board policy 0169-3. Uh, uh, the board authorized the public broadcast of regular board meetings during the calendar year. Um, resolution for group health, vision, and dental insurance for board members. Um, I don't believe any of us take the insurance, so we'll, uh, won't read that. Hiring authority. Be it resolved that the uh, Strongsville Board of Education authorizes the superintendent to employ personnel on a temporary basis between board meetings. We need a vote for this. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second, Duke. Thank you. Any discussion? George, can you take roll? Item 23. Sure. Colonel Evans? Yes. Mr. Grosner? Yes. Mrs. Ludwig? Yes. Mr. Miko? Yes. Mr. Naso? Yes. Motion passes. Excellent. And finally, we turn this over to the superintendent's report. Before we start, I think uh, a father here is telling his family it's time to go home. We appreciate all of our guests that have come to support uh, our board members, but uh, you're more than welcome to leave at this time. I say that as a nice option, but really he told me. Yeah. Tell them. <laughs> Go. Uh, we do have a few items under. Uh, Thank, Tina. Thank you, Tina and Kirsten. Under superintendent's report, uh, under curriculum, we have in Exhibit C a student teacher agreement between the district and Cleveland State University. And uh, we have uh, the placement of a school counseling uh, candidate to complete their practicum with the high school with Megan Sislowski. Uh, and that concludes curriculum, unless there's questions. And then finally, we have uh, Jenny with the uh, human resource uh, appointment. I just have one item for your consideration this evening. We have the appointment of non-certificated leadership staff, uh, Erica Tressler, to serve as our interim transportation uh, supervisor. And that concludes my report, unless you have any questions. No, nope, thank you very much. And that concludes the superintendent's report. Excellent. That brings us to item 24, consent calendar. Um, all, all items on the agenda that are marked with an asterisk are adopted in a single vote. Um, I don't believe we had any modifications or corrections to any of the uh, 
asterisk item, so can I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Duke. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Jane. Any discussion on any consent items? Uh, take roll, George. Colonel Evans? Yes. Mrs. Ludwig? Yes. Mr. Minko? Yes. Mr. Naso? Yes. Mr. Grozen? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, item 26, Board of Education uh, slash other. Does anybody have any other to discuss? Mr. Naso? Yes. So I just wanted to talk, uh, I, I spoke briefly with uh, Cameron about this earlier, um, but some of the uh, parents and community members may have seen uh, that uh, the state of Ohio has now added a new designation for high school diplomas. Um, it's the Ohio Means Jobs Readiness Seal. And the, um, I, think, I think the intention and the purpose is to um, allow high school students to uh, go through a program that lets, uh, lets them think about and lets them be evaluated and prepared for various criteria or characteristics that we feel are important to be uh, college or career ready. Uh, and uh, there's a program involved, there's a, a, a host of different characteristics that uh, students <coughs> wanting that designation will have to pass or achieve and then they'll be able to have that uh, extra designation on their high school diploma. Uh, Ohio means jobs, uh, career readiness. Um, and I think it's, you know, we can debate whether uh, it's credentialism or whether it's just another hoop and a, a pat on the head. Um, but at the end of the day, um, making sure our students are career, uh, college and career ready is something that we are invested in and that we are doing. And we are going to uh, make sure that at the high school level uh, we're able to help our students achieve this. Um, I would hate to have other high schools in the state of Ohio embrace it and we, uh, and we don't and it turns into one of those things, well, why don't you have it? So I just did, I did wanna bring that up that uh, that's something that we're gonna look at uh, for uh, the rest of this school year so that we're ready for next year. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Okay, that brings us to item 27. The next regular scheduled board meeting will be Thursday, January 25th, right here in this room. Um, we do have need for executive session, I believe, tonight, and that's on the evaluation. Uh, to consider the employment of a public employer official. All right. Uh, do we have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Thank you, Jane. Any discussion? No, pick roll. Colonel Evans? Yes. Mrs. Ludwig? Yes. Mr. Miko? Yes. Mr. Naso? Yes. Mr. Grozan? Yes. Enter an executive session at 7.35? 7.35. When we resume, we won't have any public business, so thank you very much. Have a great night. Uh, look out for the snow. It's coming tomorrow night. So we're going to have Tomorrow school. morning. Tomorrow. It's coming tomorrow.